Hey Bob. How's it going? Hey Alice. I'm good, thanks. How about you? Pretty good. I just had the best ice cream ever. What have you been up to today? Oh, nothing much. Just practicing my English a bit. You know, the usual. Practicing English. Sounds productive. I wish I could say the same. I understand English pretty well, but speaking it is a whole different story. I get it. Speaking can be tricky, but don't worry, we'll get you there. How about we practice together? Sure. I could use the help. What's your secret? You always seem so confident when you speak. Well, first of all, I talk to myself a lot. My mirror and I are best friends. Really? I never thought of that. But seriously, how do you do it? Okay, real tip time. One thing that helped me was thinking in English. Like, when you see something, try to describe it in English in your head. Hmm, that makes sense. So, if I see a dog, I should think, oh, look, a cute dog. Exactly. And try to make it a bit more detailed. Like, oh, look, a cute brown dog with a wagging tail. Got it. But what if I mess up or forget words? No worries. Everyone makes mistakes. Even native speakers do. Just keep going. Think of it as a funny game. You can even make up words if you get stuck. Like, that dog is very, a uh, fluffalicious. Exactly. Fluffalicious is now a word. Congrats, you just invented English. This is fun. What else can I do? Another thing is to talk with friends who are also learning. Like we're doing now. We can correct each other and learn together. That's true. It's less scary than talking to strangers. Right? And don't forget to listen to English songs or watch movies. Sing along or repeat lines. It's fun and you'll pick up the natural flow of the language. Oh, I love watching movies. I'll try that. Maybe I'll start with something easy, like cartoons. Perfect. And when you watch, try to repeat what the characters say. It's like having a mini-conversation. I can already picture myself talking like a cartoon character. That's the spirit. And one last tip, don't rush. Take your time to think before you speak. It's okay to pause and gather your thoughts. Thanks, Bob. You make it sound so easy and fun. I feel more confident already. You're welcome, Alice. Remember, practice makes perfect. And we can always have these chat sessions. Same time tomorrow. 
Absolutely. Thanks for the tips. You're the best. Anytime, Alice. Let's go get some of that amazing ice cream you were talking about. Great idea. Let's go. By the way, have you tried shadowing? Shadowing. What's that? It's when you listen to someone speaking in English, like a podcast or a video, and you repeat what they say right after them. It helps with pronunciation and rhythm. That sounds interesting. Do you have any recommendations for what to listen to? Sure. You can start with something you enjoy, like a favorite TV show or a YouTube channel. I personally love TED Talks. They have great speakers and interesting topics. That sounds perfect. I'll definitely try it out. Maybe I can find some TED Talks with subtitles to help me follow along. Good idea. Subtitles can be really helpful. Just don't rely on them too much. Try to wean yourself off as you get better. Will do. What about practicing with a native speaker? Is that important? It can be very helpful. If you can find a language exchange partner, that would be great. You can help them with your language, and they can help you with English. I'll look into that. It sounds like a good way to make friends, too. Definitely. And remember, the more you practice, the more comfortable you'll get. Even small conversations help. Like ordering food at a restaurant. Exactly. Or even chatting with a cashier at a store. Every little bit helps. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Bob. I feel like I have a lot of new strategies to try. You're welcome, Alice. And don't forget to have fun with it. Learning a language should be enjoyable. I agree. Speaking of fun, did you hear about the new comedy show on Netflix? We could watch an episode together and practice our English. That sounds awesome. Let's do it. Laughter is the best way to learn. Totally. Let's head back to my place. We can watch and then try to talk about it afterward. Perfect plan. And maybe we can practice some of the jokes. Humor is a great way to improve language skills. Agreed. Thanks again for all the tips, Bob. You're a lifesaver. Anytime, Alice. Let's go have some fun with English. I just wanted to take a moment to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you. Your support means the world to me. Whether you're new here or have been with us from the start, your likes, comments, and shares have helped our community grow. I love reading your feedback and seeing how much you're learning and improving. It truly motivates me to keep creating more content for you. Remember, we're in this journey together, and I'm here to help you every step of the way. If you have any suggestions or topics you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments below.
And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you once again for your amazing support. Let's continue to learn and grow together. See you in the next video. Bye for now. Good morning, Mr. Ahmed. How are you feeling today? Good morning, Dr. Smith. I'm feeling a bit anxious, to be honest. I understand. It's completely normal to feel that way before surgery. Let's talk about everything, and hopefully, I can answer all your questions and ease your worries. Thank you, doctor. I appreciate it. Let's start with a few questions about your current health. Have you been experiencing any pain or discomfort lately? I've had some pain in my abdomen, but it's not too severe. All right, we'll make sure to take care of that. Have you been taking any medication for the pain? Just some over-the-counter painkillers. Good to know. Have you had any issues with eating or drinking? No, my appetite is normal. That's a good sign. Now let's talk about the surgery. You're scheduled for an appendectomy, which means we'll be removing your appendix. Do you know why this is necessary? Yes, because my appendix is inflamed, right? Exactly. It's called appendicitis, and removing the appendix is the best way to prevent any serious complications, like an infection. How long will the surgery take? The surgery usually takes about an hour. You'll be under general anesthesia, so you won't feel anything during the procedure. What happens after the surgery? After the surgery, you'll be moved to a recovery room where our nurses will monitor you until you wake up from the anesthesia. Then, you'll be taken back to your room to rest. How long will I need to stay in the hospital? Most patients stay for one to two days depending on how quickly they recover. We'll keep an eye on you and make sure everything is healing well before you go home. What kind of care will I need at home? At home, you'll need to rest and avoid any strenuous activities for a couple of weeks. I'll give you detailed instructions and a list of things to avoid. Will I need to take any medication after the surgery? Yes, you'll be prescribed pain medication and possibly antibiotics to prevent infection. Follow the dosage instructions carefully. Are there any risks I should be aware of? Like any surgery, there are some risks, but they are rare. These include infection, bleeding, or complications from anesthesia. We take every precaution to minimize these risks. What should I do if I experience any problems after I go home? If you notice any signs of infection, such as redness, swelling, or fever, contact us immediately. Also, if you experience severe pain that doesn't go away with medication, call us. How long will it take for me to fully recover? Most people feel much better within a week, but complete recovery can take up to a month. Everyone's different, so listen to your body and don't rush things. 
I understand. Thank you for explaining everything, Dr. Smith. I feel a bit more at ease now. I'm glad to hear that. Do you have any other questions or concerns? Actually, I do have a few more questions. What should I expect on the day of the surgery? On the day of the surgery, you'll need to arrive at the hospital a few hours before the procedure. Our team will prepare you, which includes checking your vital signs, inserting in four, and making sure you're comfortable. You'll also meet with the anesthesiologist, who will go over the anesthesia process with you. Will my family be able to see me before the surgery? Yes, your family can stay with you until it's time for you to go to the operating room. After that, they can wait in the designated waiting area, and we'll keep them updated on your progress. That's good to know. What about eating and drinking before the surgery? You'll need to fast, which means no eating or drinking, starting from midnight the night before the surgery. This is important to prevent any complications with the anesthesia. What if I accidentally eat or drink something? If that happens, let us know immediately. We may need to reschedule the surgery to ensure your safety. I'll be careful. After the surgery, what kind of follow-up care will I need? You'll have a follow-up appointment about a week after the surgery to check on your recovery. During this visit, we'll examine your incision site, remove any stitches if necessary, and address any questions or concerns you might have. What can I do to aid my recovery? The best thing you can do is rest and follow our post-operative care instructions. Keep the incision area clean and dry, avoid heavy lifting or strenuous activities, and take your medications as prescribed. Is there anything specific I should watch out for during my recovery? Yes, watch for signs of infection, such as increased redness, swelling, or discharge from the incision site, as well as fever. Also, if you experience persistent pain, nausea, or vomiting, contact us right away. I will. What about my diet after the surgery? Are there any restrictions? You might have a reduced appetite initially, which is normal. Start with light, easy-to-digest foods like soups and crackers, and gradually return to your normal diet as you feel up to it. Stay hydrated by drinking plenty of water. That sounds manageable. How can I manage the pain after the surgery? We'll prescribe pain medication to help manage the discomfort. It's important to take it as directed and not to skip doses. If the pain isn't controlled with the medication, let us know so we can adjust your treatment. What if I have trouble sleeping? It's common to have some trouble sleeping after surgery. Try to rest during the day if you can, and create a comfortable sleep environment. Avoid caffeine and use relaxation techniques like deep breathing to help you fall asleep. I'll try that. How soon can I return to work or normal activities? This depends on the type of work you do and how you're feeling. For most people, light activities can be resumed in a few days, but it may take a couple of weeks before you can return to more strenuous activities or work. 
We'll discuss this in more detail at your follow-up appointment. That makes sense. Is there anything else I should know? Just remember to listen to your body and take things slow. Don't push yourself too hard and don't hesitate to ask for help if you need it. We're here to support you through your recovery. Thank you, Dr. Smith. You've been very helpful. You're welcome, Mr. Ahmed. I'll check in with you again before the surgery. In the meantime, try to relax and get some rest. I will. Thank you again, doctor. You're welcome, Mr. Ahmed. I'll check in with you again before the surgery. In the meantime, try to relax and get some rest. I will. Thank you again, doctor. Take care, Mr. Ahmed. See you soon. See you, Dr. Smith. Hey Lisa, how's your day going so far? Hi John. It's been pretty busy, but manageable. I had a couple of meetings this morning that went well. How about you? Same here. Busy but productive. I managed to finish that report we were working on. I sent it over to you for review. Great. I'll take a look at it later today. By the way, I heard some news about a new job opening. Have you heard anything? Oh, you mean the project manager position that just opened up? Yes, that's the one. I was thinking about applying for it. It seems like a great opportunity. It definitely does. What attracted you to it? Well, I've been in my current role for a few years now, and I feel like I'm ready for a new challenge. The project manager role would allow me to use my organizational skills more effectively and take on more responsibility. Plus, it's a step up in my career. That makes sense. You've always been great at managing tasks and coordinating with the team. Do you know much about the requirements for the position? I looked into it briefly. They require at least five years of experience in project management, strong leadership skills, and a proven track record of managing successful projects. I think I meet most of the criteria, but I'm a bit nervous about the interview process. I can understand that. Interviews can be daunting, but you have a lot of experience to back you up. Have you started preparing for it? Not yet, but I plan to. I want to update my resume first and then start practicing some common interview questions. Do you have any tips for preparing for an interview? Definitely. First, make sure your resume highlights your most relevant experience and achievements. Tailor it to the job description as much as possible. For the interview, practice answering questions about your past projects, how you handled challenges, and your leadership style. It's also good to have some questions ready for the interviewer. That's great advice. I hadn't thought about having questions ready for them. What kind of questions do you think would be good to ask? You could ask about the team you'll be working with, the specific projects you'll be managing, and the company's expectations for the role. It's also good to ask about the company culture and any opportunities for professional development. Those are really good suggestions. I'll make sure to prepare some questions along those lines. How do you usually handle interview nerves? I try to stay calm by reminding myself that the interview is a two-way street. It's not just about them evaluating me, it's also about me finding out if the job is a good fit for me. Taking deep breaths and practicing mindfulness techniques can also help. That's a good point. 
I need to remember that I'm also assessing if this is the right move for me. Thanks for the tips, John. I feel a bit more confident now. Anytime, Lisa. I think you'll do great. You've got the skills and the experience they're looking for. Just be yourself and show them what you can bring to the table. I appreciate that. I think I will apply for it. Have you thought about applying for any new positions lately? I have, actually. I've been considering looking into some roles in a different department. I feel like a change of scenery might be good for me. That's interesting. Which department are you thinking about? I'm thinking about the marketing department. I've always been interested in the creative side of things, and I feel like I could bring some fresh ideas to their campaigns. That sounds like a great fit for you. You have a lot of creativity, and you're always coming up with new ideas. Have you looked into any specific positions? Not yet, but I plan to do some research this weekend. I want to see what opportunities are available and what the requirements are. It's exciting to think about a new challenge. It definitely is. If you need any help with your resume or preparing for interviews, just let me know. I'd be happy to help. Thanks, Lisa. I might take you up on that. It's always good to get a second opinion. Absolutely. We're in this together. It's important to support each other, especially when it comes to career growth. I agree. Speaking of which, have you thought about what your long-term career goals are? I have. I want to eventually move into a senior management role, maybe even become a director one day. I enjoy leading teams and driving projects to success. What about you? I'd like to move into a strategic role, perhaps in a few years. I enjoy looking at the big picture and figuring out how all the pieces fit together. It would be great to contribute to the overall direction of the company. Those are great goals. It's important to have a clear vision of where you want to go. It helps to stay motivated and focused. Absolutely. And taking steps like applying for new roles and gaining more experience will help us get there. Agreed. Well, thanks for the chat, John. I feel more prepared and motivated now. Anytime, Lisa. Good luck with your application. I'm sure you'll do great. And if you need any help, just let me know. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Good luck with your research on the marketing roles. I'll be here to support you too. Thanks, Lisa. Let's keep each other updated on our progress. Definitely. Have a great rest of your day, John. You too, Lisa. Take care. Hi, I'm John. Nice to meet you. Hi John, I'm Sarah, nice to meet you too. So, what brings you here today? I'm here for the community meetup. I love meeting new people and learning about different interests. How about you? Same here. I'm always looking to make new friends and network. What do you do for work? I'm a graphic designer. I work mostly on branding and digital illustrations. What about you? That's awesome. I'm a software developer. I specialize in web applications and enjoy working on creative projects. That's cool. I actually need some help with a website for my portfolio. 
Maybe we could collaborate sometime. I love that. It sounds like a fun project. Do you have any hobbies outside of work? I enjoy painting and hiking. I find it relaxing to be in nature. How about you? I love hiking too. I also enjoy playing guitar and cooking. Have you explored any good hiking trails around here? Yes, there's a great trail near the lake that I visit often. It's beautiful, especially in the morning. Have you been there? I haven't, but it sounds like a perfect spot. We should go hiking there together sometime. That sounds like a plan. It was great meeting you, John. Looking forward to our hike. Likewise, Sarah. See you soon. Hey, Sarah. I just realized we didn't exchange contact information. How can we plan our hike? Oh, right. Here, let me give you my number. Do you use WhatsApp? Yes, I do. Here's my number as well. I'll send you a message later. Perfect. So, how long have you been a software developer? About five years now. I started out doing small freelance projects and then landed a full-time job at a tech company. What about you? How long have you been a graphic designer? I've been in the field for about three years. I started with an internship at a design studio and then moved on to freelancing. I love the flexibility and variety of projects. That sounds great. Freelancing must give you a lot of creative freedom. It does, but it also comes with its own challenges. Managing time and finding clients can be tough sometimes. I can imagine, balancing multiple projects and clients must be tricky. How do you manage it all? I try to stay organized with a planner and set clear deadlines for myself. And I always make sure to communicate well with my clients. What about you? How do you manage your workload? I use project management tools like Trello and Slack. They help me keep track of tasks and collaborate with my team. And I make sure to take breaks to avoid burnout. That's smart. It's important to take care of yourself. Do you work remotely or in an office? I work remotely most of the time. It gives me the flexibility to work from anywhere, which is nice. How about you? Mostly remotely, but I do visit clients for meetings occasionally. I enjoy the balance. Working from different locations keeps things interesting. Absolutely. It's nice to change up the environment sometimes. Do you have a favorite place to work from? I love working from cafes. The ambient noise helps me focus, and I enjoy the atmosphere. Plus, the coffee is a bonus. How about you? I like working from home, but sometimes I go to co-working spaces. They have a great community vibe, and it's easier to network with other professionals. 
That's true. Networking is important. Have you made any interesting connections through co-working spaces? Yes, I've met a few fellow developers and designers. It's always inspiring to see what others are working on, and sometimes we end up collaborating on projects. That sounds wonderful. Collaboration can lead to some amazing outcomes. Speaking of which, do you have any exciting projects you're working on right now? I'm actually working on a new web app for a local nonprofit. It's a challenging project, but very rewarding. What about you? Any interesting projects? Good morning, Mr. Smith. Thank you for coming in today. How are you? Good morning, Ms. Johnson. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Let's start with a brief introduction. Could you tell me a bit about yourself and your background? Of course, I graduated from the University of California with a degree in computer science. After that, I worked at XYZ Tech for three years as a software developer. There, I gained experience in full-stack development and worked on several high-profile projects. I'm passionate about coding and always eager to learn new technologies. That sounds impressive. Can you tell me more about your role at XYZ Tech? What were your main responsibilities? At XYZ Tech, I was responsible for designing and implementing web applications. I collaborated with a team of developers, designers, and product managers to deliver user-friendly software solutions. I also participated in code reviews, wrote unit tests, and optimized existing code for better performance. Great! Can you give me an example of a project you worked on that you're particularly proud of? Certainly, one project I'm particularly proud of was a customer relationship management CRM system we developed for a major client. I led the back-end development, which involved designing the database schema and integrating third-party APIS. The project had a tight deadline, but we managed to deliver it on time and received positive feedback from the client. That sounds like a significant achievement. What would you say was the biggest challenge you faced during that project, and how did you overcome it? The biggest challenge was handling the high volume of data transactions while maintaining system performance. We had to ensure that the system could scale effectively. To address this, I implemented caching strategies and optimized database queries. Additionally, I worked closely with the front-end team to ensure efficient data loading and rendering. Excellent! Let's talk about your technical skills. What programming languages are you most proficient in? And do you have experience with any frameworks or libraries? I'm most proficient in JavaScript, Python, and Java. I have extensive experience with frameworks like React and Angular for front-end development and Node.js and Django for back-end development. I'm also familiar with databases such as Miskel and MongoD. That's a solid skill set. How do you stay updated with the latest developments in technology? I make it a point to read tech blogs, follow industry leaders on social media, and participate in online coding communities. I also take online courses and attend webinars and tech conferences whenever possible. Continuous learning is important to me. It's great to hear that you're committed to continuous learning. Now, let's discuss teamwork. Can you describe a time when you had to work closely with a team to achieve a goal? 
Certainly, in my previous role, we had a project where the client requested a significant change midway through the development process. This required close collaboration with the design team to ensure the new requirements were met without compromising the project timeline. We held daily stand-up meetings, and I maintained open communication with all team members. In the end, we successfully implemented the changes and delivered the project on schedule. Teamwork is crucial, and it sounds like you handled that situation well. What would you say is your greatest strength, and how does it help you in your work? I believe my greatest strength is my problem-solving ability. I enjoy tackling complex issues and finding efficient solutions. This strength helps me stay calm under pressure and deliver high-quality results even when faced with challenging tasks. Problem-solving is indeed a valuable skill. On the flip side, what would you say is an area where you can improve? One area I'm working on is time management. Sometimes I get so engrossed in solving a problem that I lose track of time. To improve, I've started using task management tools and setting reminders to ensure I stay on schedule and meet deadlines. It's good that you're aware of it and taking steps to improve. Before we conclude, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do. Can you tell me more about the team I would be working with and the main projects I would be involved in if I were to join your company? Absolutely. You would be joining our product development team, which is currently working on a new cloud-based application. The team is a mix of experienced developers and newer members, creating a dynamic and collaborative environment. You'd have the opportunity to work on both front-end and back-end development, depending on your strengths and interests. That sounds exciting. I look forward to the possibility of contributing to the team. What are the next steps in the interview process? The next step would be a technical assessment, followed by a final interview with our CTO. We'll get back to you within the next week with further details. Thank you for coming in today, Mr. Smith. Thank you for having me, Ms. Johnson. I appreciate the opportunity. Have a great day. You too. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you. How about you? I'm great. Thanks. I thought it would be interesting to talk about our daily routines today. You know, just to see how we spend our days differently. Shall we start? Sounds like a great idea. Let's do it. So, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Well, I usually wake up at 6 a.m. The first thing I do is drink a glass of water. It helps me feel refreshed and ready for the day. What about you? I wake up around 6.30 a.m. The first thing I do is check my phone for any important messages or emails. It helps me stay updated with my schedule. After that, I head to the kitchen to make some coffee. How do you start your morning after drinking water? After drinking water, I go for a quick run in the park nearby. It's a great way to get some exercise and clear my mind. I usually run for about 30 minutes. Do you exercise in the morning? Yes, I do. After having my coffee, I do some stretching exercises and a bit of yoga. It helps me stay flexible and energized for the day. After that, I take a quick shower. What about you? When do you shower? I shower right after my run. It's refreshing and helps me cool down. After my shower, I have a light breakfast, usually some fruits and a bowl of oatmeal. What do you have for breakfast? For breakfast, I like to have a hearty meal. I usually have eggs, toast, 
and a cup of tea. Sometimes, I add some yogurt or cereal to it. After breakfast, I start preparing for work. What do you do after breakfast? After breakfast, I spend some time reading the news or a book. It helps me stay informed and also gives me a bit of quiet time before the busy day begins. Around 8 a.m., I start getting ready for work. I work from home, so my commute is just a few steps to my home office. How about you? What's your work routine like? I work at an office, so I leave home around 8.30 a.m. My commute takes about 30 minutes. Once I get to the office, I start by checking my emails and setting my priorities for the day. I usually have meetings in the morning. Do you have a similar routine when working from home? Yes, I do. I start by checking emails, and then I make a to-do list for the day. I have video meetings with my team in the morning as well. It's important to stay connected even when working remotely. How do you manage your lunch time? I usually have lunch around 1 p.m. I prefer to bring my own lunch from home. It's healthier and saves time. I often have a sandwich or a salad. How about you? Do you take breaks during the day? I try to take short breaks throughout the day to stretch and relax. For lunch, I usually have a simple meal, something like a salad or a sandwich, just like you. It keeps me light and active for the afternoon. Do you have a lot of meetings in the afternoon? Not as many as in the morning. I use the afternoon to focus on my tasks and projects. It's a good time to get things done without too many interruptions. How do you stay productive in the afternoon? I usually have a big task to focus on in the afternoon. I find that setting specific goals helps me stay productive. I also take a short break in the late afternoon to have some tea and maybe a snack. What about you? How do you wind down your workday? I wrap up my work around 5.30 p.m. before leaving the office. I make a list of tasks for the next day. It helps me stay organized. Once I'm home, I like to relax for a bit and then go for a walk or spend time with my family. How do you spend your evenings? I usually finish work around 5 p.m. in the evening. I like to spend time with my family too. We often have dinner together and then watch a movie or play some board games. It's a nice way to relax after a busy day. Do you have any hobbies or activities you do in the evening? Yes, I enjoy reading and sometimes I work on my hobbies, like painting or playing the guitar. It's a great way to unwind and do something creative. How do you prepare for bed? I usually start winding down around 9.30 p.m. I like to read a book or listen to some calming music. It helps me relax and get ready for sleep. I try to be in bed by 10.30 p.m. How about you? I try to be in bed by 11 p.m. I also read a bit before sleeping. It's a nice way to end the day on a peaceful note. Well, it looks like we both have pretty organized routines. It's interesting to see the similarities and differences. Absolutely. It was great to share our daily routines. Maybe we can try incorporating some of each other's habits into our own routines. That's a good idea. It's always good to learn from each other. Thanks for the chat, Ollie. Have a great day. You too, Ahmad. Take care. Good morning, teacher. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Alexis. It is my pleasure to be here and help you all improve your English. Teacher, I have a question. How can someone learn to speak English like a native speaker? Many students believe it is an impossible task. That is an excellent question, Alexis. While it is challenging, it is certainly not impossible. There are several strategies one can employ to sound more like a native speaker. Could you please elaborate on those strategies? Of course. First and foremost, immersion is key. Surround yourself with the English language as much as possible. This includes watching English language movies, listening to English music, and reading English books and articles. That makes sense. Are there any specific practices you recommend for improving pronunciation? 
Yes, focusing on pronunciation is crucial. I recommend practicing with phonetic exercises. You can use online resources such as videos and apps that provide phonetic training. Additionally, mimicry is a powerful tool. Try to imitate the speech patterns and intonations of native speakers. What about vocabulary? How important is it to use idiomatic expressions and slang? Vocabulary is very important, and using idiomatic expressions and slang can make your speech sound more natural. However, it is essential to learn these expressions in context to avoid misuse. Listening to native speakers and practicing with them can help you understand when and how to use these phrases appropriately. Speaking of practicing with native speakers, what do you suggest for someone who doesn't have access to native speakers? That is a common challenge. In such cases, language exchange platforms can be very useful. Websites and apps like Tandem, HelloTalk, and Italki connect you with native speakers who are learning your language. This way, you can practice speaking with them regularly. Those are excellent suggestions. How important is grammar in sounding like a native speaker? Grammar is fundamental. While native speakers sometimes break grammatical rules in casual speech, a strong understanding of grammar will help you form coherent and accurate sentences. I recommend studying grammar through structured courses and practicing by writing essays or journal entries. Are there any specific exercises to improve fluency? Yes, fluency comes with consistent practice. One effective exercise is shadowing, where you listen to a short audio clip and try to speak along with it in real time. This helps improve your speed and rhythm. Another exercise is participating in discussions or debates, which forces you to think and respond quickly in English. What role does cultural understanding play in speaking like a native? Cultural understanding is crucial. Language and culture are deeply intertwined. Understanding the cultural context of certain expressions and social norms can help you use language more appropriately and naturally. Engaging with English-speaking cultures through media, literature, and even travel, if possible, can greatly enhance your language skills. Thank you, teacher. These tips are incredibly helpful. Do you have any final advice for students aspiring to speak like native speakers? My final advice is to be patient and persistent. Language learning is a gradual process, and there will be challenges along the way. Practice regularly, seek feedback, and immerse yourself in the language as much as possible. With time and effort, you will see significant improvement. Thank you so much, teacher. We appreciate your guidance and expertise. You are welcome, Alexis. I am glad to help. Keep practicing and stay motivated. Good luck to all of you in your language learning journey. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Good morning. Doctor, I'm feeling a bit better than yesterday, thank you. How are you? I'm glad to hear that you're feeling better. I'm doing well, thank you. So, let's go over how you've been since your last visit. How has your pain level been on a scale from 1 to 10? It's been around a 5 most of the time, but sometimes it spikes to a 7, especially in the evenings. I see. Have you been taking the pain medication as prescribed? Yes, I've been following the prescription exactly. The medication helps, but the pain still comes and goes. That's not uncommon. We'll discuss some options to better manage your pain. 
Have you noticed any other symptoms, such as nausea, dizziness, or changes in your appetite? I've been feeling a bit nauseous, but it's not constant. My appetite is mostly unchanged, but I've lost a few pounds. It's good that your appetite hasn't been significantly affected. The nausea could be a side effect of the medication. We'll look into that. Have you been able to sleep well? Not really. I've been having trouble falling asleep and staying asleep. The pain wakes me up sometimes. Sleep disturbances can definitely impact your overall well-being. Let's consider a mild sleep aid that can help you rest better. Have you been able to engage in any physical activities or exercise? I've been trying to walk a bit each day, but it's challenging when the pain gets worse. I haven't been able to do much more than that. Walking is good. It's important to keep moving, but you should also listen to your body. We might need to adjust your pain management plan to help you stay more active. How about your mental health? Have you been feeling anxious or depressed? I have been feeling a bit anxious, especially when the pain is bad. It's been hard to stay positive sometimes. Walking is good. It's important to keep moving, but you should also listen to your body. We might need to adjust your pain management plan to help you stay more active. How about your mental health? Have you been feeling anxious or depressed? I think that could be helpful. I've never tried therapy before, but I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm glad to hear that. I'll refer you to a therapist who specializes in helping patients with chronic pain. It's important to address both the physical and emotional aspects of your condition. Thank you, doctor. I appreciate your support. Of course. Now, let's go over some adjustments we can make to your treatment plan. We'll consider changing your pain medication and possibly adding a sleep aid. I'll also refer you to physical therapy to help improve your mobility. Does that sound good? Yes, that sounds like a good plan. I'm willing to try anything that can help. Great. I'll write down the new prescriptions and give you the referral for the therapist and the physical therapist. Do you have any other questions or concerns? Actually, yes. I've been worried about how my condition will affect my ability to work. I don't want to lose my job. It's a valid concern. We can discuss options like modifying your work duties or considering a temporary leave of absence. It's important to communicate with your employer about your condition and what accommodations might be necessary. We can also provide documentation to support your case. That would be very helpful. I'll talk to my employer about it. I'm glad to hear that. Open communication is key. We'll work together to ensure you can manage your condition while maintaining your quality of life. Remember, you're not alone in this. We're here to support you every step of the way. Thank you, doctor. Your support means a lot to me. I'm glad to hear that. Open communication is key. We'll work together to ensure you can manage your condition while maintaining your quality of life. Remember, you're not alone in this. We're here to support you every step of the way. I will. Thank you again for everything. Take care, and I'll see you next week. Hey Sarah. It's such a beautiful day, isn't it? Absolutely, Ollie. The weather is perfect. It's great to take a break from the routine and just enjoy nature. I couldn't agree more. How have you been lately? I've been good, busy with work and some personal projects. What about you? Same here. I've been juggling a few things, but managing well. By the way, I've noticed you've been putting a lot of effort into learning English lately. What motivated you to focus on it so much? 
Oh, that's an interesting topic. There are several reasons, actually. But before I dive into that, why do you ask? Well, I'm curious because I'm thinking about improving my English too. I want to know if it's worth the time and effort. Maybe your reasons will inspire me. I see. All right, let me share my thoughts then. One of the primary reasons I want to learn English is for career advancement. In today's globalized world, English is often considered the international business language. Many multinational companies use English as their primary means of communication. Being proficient in English can open up numerous job opportunities and help in career growth. That's a solid reason. Do you think it has a significant impact on job prospects? Definitely. In many fields, such as IT, medicine, engineering, and even marketing, employers prefer candidates who can communicate effectively in English. It not only enhances your chances of getting hired, but also increases your potential for promotions and international assignments. In fact, many job postings explicitly mention the need for strong English skills. That makes sense. What about personal reasons? Is there anything beyond career benefits? Absolutely. On a personal level, learning English can be incredibly fulfilling. It allows you to connect with people from different cultures and backgrounds. English is spoken by millions of people worldwide, and being able to communicate in it can broaden your social circle. You can make friends, exchange ideas, and understand different perspectives, which is enriching. That's true. I've seen how it can break down barriers. What else? Another reason is access to information. A significant amount of the world's knowledge, be it books, research papers, or online content, is available in English. By learning the language, you can access a wealth of information that might otherwise be out of reach. This is particularly useful for academic purposes and staying updated with global trends. I hadn't thought about that. It's like unlocking a treasure trove of knowledge. How has it impacted your everyday life? In many ways. For instance, traveling becomes much easier when you know English. Whether you're asking for directions, ordering food, or simply interacting with locals, English often serves as a common language in many countries. It enhances your travel experiences and makes them more enjoyable. That's a great point. I remember struggling during my last trip because of the language barrier. Any other reasons? Yes, one more thing is personal development. Learning a new language, especially one as widely spoken as English, can boost your cognitive abilities. It improves your memory, problem-solving skills, and even multitasking abilities. Moreover, it's a great way to challenge yourself and keep your brain active. That's quite a comprehensive list. You've really thought this through. Yes, one more thing is personal development. Learning a new language, especially one as widely spoken as English, can boost your cognitive abilities. It improves your memory, problem-solving skills, and even multitasking abilities. Moreover, it's a great way to challenge yourself and keep your brain active. I agree with that. I've missed out on so many great shows because of language issues. Exactly. So considering all these reasons career growth, personal connections, access to information, travel convenience, cognitive benefits, and entertainment I believe learning English is definitely worth the effort. You've convinced me, Sarah. Your reasons are really solid. I think I'll start dedicating more time to learning English too. Thanks for sharing your insights. My pleasure, Ollie. I'm glad you found it helpful. If you need any tips or resources, feel free to ask. We can even practice together if you'd like. That sounds great. I'll definitely take you up on that offer. Here's to becoming fluent in English. Cheers to that. Let's make it happen. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, 
make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below. Your feedback means the world to us. And don't forget to subscribe for more great content. Your support keeps us going. See you in the next video. Hold on a minute, George. I'm feeling a bit tired. Can we take a short break? Of course, Dad, but we're almost there. Just two more minutes to the lake. I know, but these old bones need a rest. I'm not as young as I used to be. I understand. But remember, you were the one eager to come out here. That's true. Now that I'm approaching retirement, I want to spend more quality time with you. I've worked hard all these years for what we have now, and I think I've earned a little downtime. You're right. You've always worked tirelessly. We have a wonderful home, great furniture, a fully stocked fridge, and even a swimming pool. Plus, I go to one of the best universities in the country. We really do have everything. Yes, but it hasn't always been this way. There was a time when we had nothing. You've mentioned that before, but I still find it hard to believe. You always seem so well off. That's because you haven't experienced poverty. Believe it or not, there was a time when I had to sell candy on the streets as a child. Really? I had no idea. Can you tell me more about it? Sure, let's sit here for a bit while I tell you my story. When I was a kid, life was tough for our family. My father was blind, and my mother sold candy on the streets to make ends meet. I felt a strong responsibility to help out, so after school, I would join my mother in selling candies, while my father played the guitar to attract customers. Wow, that must have been hard. It was. But my parents always emphasized the importance of education, believing it was the key to a better life. So, I studied hard, knowing it was my ticket to a brighter future. There were times I wanted to give up, but looking at my parents' resilience always inspired me to keep going. What happened after you finished high school? After high school, I knew I had to change our situation. I took on various odd jobs, saving every penny for college. It wasn't easy, and it took me two years to save enough, especially with the constant emergencies that drained my savings. But eventually, I saved enough to enroll in college. And then you studied business, right? Yes, I did. Balancing coursework with part-time jobs was challenging, but I was determined. I graduated with a degree in business, which was a proud moment for my family and me. I started working at a well-known company, starting as an assistant and working my way up to general manager. It was fulfilling, but I realized I didn't have enough time for my family. Is that when you decided to start your own business? Exactly. I wanted more control over my time and to be closer to my loved ones. Today, I run my own successful company. I've come a long way from selling candies on the streets, but I never forget where I started. The values of hard work and perseverance my parents taught me are with me every day. I hope you carry those values with you too. I will, Dad. I didn't know much about my grandparents since they passed away when I was young, but I know they were amazing. And you're the best father I could ask for. I love you, son. Now, let's get moving before you make me cry. If you enjoyed this conversation and want to improve your English further, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with a friend. This place looks nice. I've heard their food is amazing. Glad we decided to come here. Yeah, it's been on my list for a while. I'm excited to try their specials. Let's grab that table by the window. Perfect. 
The menu looks extensive. What are you thinking of ordering? Hmm, I'm leaning towards the grilled salmon. It's supposed to be their specialty. What about you? The salmon sounds good, but I'm in the mood for something different. Maybe I'll go for the steak. I've been craving it lately. That's a solid choice. I've heard their steak is top-notch too. Have you decided on any appetizers? I was thinking about the calamari. It's usually a safe bet. What about you? I might go for the bruschetta. It's always a nice way to start a meal. Shall we also get a salad to share? Sounds good. The Caesar salad looks tempting. Let's go with that. So, what have you been up to lately? Work has been hectic as usual, but I've been trying to find time for some hobbies. I started taking a pottery class. It's so relaxing. That sounds fun. I've always wanted to try pottery. I've been pretty busy with work too, but I managed to squeeze in a weekend hike last week. The weather was perfect. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Which trail did you go to? We went to the Eagle Creek Trail. The scenery was breathtaking and the waterfall at the end was worth the hike. You should come with us next time. Sure, let's share the chocolate lava cake. It's always a good choice. Definitely. So, have you decided on your drink? I think I'll go with a glass of Coca-Cola. It should pair nicely with the salmon. What about you? A glass of water for me. It'll complement the steak perfectly. Cheers to a good meal and catching up. Cheers. So, tell me more about your recent project at work. You mentioned it briefly last time. Oh, it's been intense. We're developing a new software tool that's supposed to streamline our workflow. It's a lot of pressure, but it's exciting to see it come together. That sounds challenging but rewarding. I'm sure it'll be a great success with you on the team. Oh, it's been intense. We're developing a new software tool that's supposed to streamline our workflow. It's a lot of pressure, but it's exciting to see it come together. We've been working on a marketing campaign for a new product launch. It's been all hands on deck, but I'm confident it'll pay off. We've got some creative ideas in the pipeline. That's great to hear. I always admire your creativity and dedication. Oh, look, the food is here. Let's dig in. Everything looks and smells amazing. The presentation is lovely too. Let's start with the appetizers. The calamari is perfectly crispy. How's the bruschetta? Delicious. The tomatoes are so fresh and flavorful. And the Caesar salad is a great addition. How's the steak? Cooked to perfection. Tender and juicy, just the way I like it. How's your salmon? Absolutely delicious. The seasoning is spot on, and it's cooked just right. We definitely made good choices. 
We really did. This place lives up to the hype. So, any plans for the weekend? I'm planning to visit my parents. It's been a while since I spent some quality time with them. What about you? I'm thinking of having a lazy weekend at home. Maybe catch up on some reading and watch a few movies. I need some downtime. That sounds nice and relaxing. Sometimes, a quiet weekend is exactly what you need. Agreed. All right, I think I'm ready for dessert. Do you want to share something? Sure, let's share the chocolate lava cake. It's always a good choice. Great idea. This was a fantastic meal. I'm so glad we came here. Me too. It's been a perfect evening. Let's settle the bill and head out. I'll get it this time. You can cover it next time. Are you sure? We can split it. Positive. It's my treat. Ready to go. Ready. Thanks for dinner, John. Let's do this again soon. Absolutely. Have a great weekend with your parents. See you soon. You too. Enjoy your relaxing weekend. Bye. Bye. Amazing viewers. Thanks a ton for watching our video. Your support is what keeps us going and we are so happy to have you with us. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and drop a comment below. We love hearing from you. And if you haven't yet, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss out on our latest content. We've got some exciting stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Thanks again for being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey Taylor, long time no see. How's it going? Hey Alex. I've been great, thanks. How about you? I'm good. Actually, I've been itching to go on a trip. We should plan something together. That's a fantastic idea. I've been dying to get out of town. Any ideas on where we should go? Hmm, there are so many places on my bucket list. How about somewhere with a mix of adventure and relaxation? Perfect. What about Thailand? We could explore the bustling streets of Bangkok and then chill on the beaches in Phuket. Thailand sounds amazing. I've always wanted to try authentic Thai food. Plus, I've heard the night markets are out of this world. Oh, absolutely. The street food there is supposed to be incredible. And we can't miss the floating markets. Yes. And we should definitely visit some temples while we're there. The architecture is stunning. Agreed. And maybe we could take a cooking class to learn how to make some of those delicious dishes ourselves. That would be awesome. Imagine coming back home and being able to whip up some pad thai or tom yum soup. Our friends would be so impressed. Speaking of which, do you think anyone else would want to join us on this adventure? Hmm, maybe we could ask Jamie and Chris. They've been talking about wanting to travel too. Great idea. The more, the merrier. We should start a group chat to brainstorm and plan everything. 
Sounds good. We'll need to sort out flights, accommodations, and a rough itinerary. Right. We should also look into what time of year is best to visit. I heard the weather can be pretty unpredictable. Good point. We don't want to end up in the middle of monsoon season. Maybe we should aim for late November or early December. Perfect timing. The weather should be nice, and it's not too touristy then. Awesome. So, let's talk budget. How much are we thinking of spending? Perfect timing. The weather should be nice, and it's not too touristy then. Agreed. I think we can find some good deals online if we start looking now. Plus, we should keep an eye out for flight sales. Definitely. Oh, and we should make a list of must-see places and activities. We don't want to miss anything. Agreed. I think we can find some good deals online if we start looking now. Plus, we should keep an eye out for flight sales. And we have to go snorkeling or scuba diving in the Phi Phi Islands. The underwater life there is supposed to be spectacular. Yes. I've always wanted to try scuba diving. It's going to be such an adventure. We should also leave some time for just relaxing and soaking up the sun on the beach. For sure. Maybe we could even get a traditional Thai massage. I've heard they are incredible. That sounds heavenly. I'm getting excited just talking about it. Me too. We should definitely start booking things soon. I can't wait to get this trip rolling. Same here. Let's meet up this weekend and start planning in detail. Sounds like a plan. Oh, and don't forget to check if you need any vaccinations or special visas for Thailand. Good call. We don't want any last-minute surprises. I'll make a checklist so we don't miss anything. Perfect. And we should also look into travel insurance. It's always good to be prepared for unexpected events. Agreed. Better safe than sorry. I'll find a few options and share them with you. Great. And speaking of preparations, have you thought about what to pack? Not yet, but I'm guessing we'll need light clothing for the beaches, and maybe something a bit more formal for the temples. Yeah, I'm thinking a mix of casual and a couple of dressier outfits. And don't forget comfortable shoes for all the exploring we'll be doing. Oh, definitely. I'll make sure to pack my walking shoes. And maybe a hat and sunscreen to stay protected from the sun. Good idea. And it might be worth bringing a small first aid kit, just in case. That's smart. I'll make sure to include that. We should also think about how we'll get around once we're there. Do you prefer public transport or renting scooters? I'm open to both. Public transport is usually cheaper, but renting scooters sounds like a lot of fun. We'd have more freedom to explore at our own pace. I'm leaning towards renting scooters too. It'll make it easier to get to those off-the-beaten-path spots. Agreed. And it could be a great way to see more of the local life. Exactly. Oh, and we should probably think about how we're going to handle money while we're there. 
Should we use cash or are credit cards widely accepted? Good question. From what I've read, credit cards are accepted in many places, but it's always a good idea to carry some cash for smaller vendors and markets. Got it. I'll make sure to get some Thai baht before we leave. Perfect. And let's not forget to check if there are any local customs or etiquette we should be aware of. Absolutely. I'll do some research on that so we can be respectful and avoid any awkward situations. Perfect. And let's not forget to check if there are any local customs or etiquette we should be aware of. Me too, Alex. It's going to be an unforgettable adventure. I can't wait to start this journey with you. Same here. Let's make sure we plan everything thoroughly so we can make the most of our time there. Definitely. I'll see you this weekend to dive into the details. It's going to be fantastic. Looking forward to it. Until then, take care. You too, Alex. Bye for now. Bye, Taylor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Your support truly makes our day brighter. We love seeing your comments and hearing how our videos help you with your English. It's like getting a high five from the internet. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, drop a comment below, and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any of our future chats. We're like your friendly neighborhood English tutors, always here to help you shine. Thanks again for being such an awesome part of our community. Keep up the great work with your English, and we'll see you in the next video. You're amazing!